is God of angel armies? Did you ever think about that? Pretty awesome stuff, huh? This God of angel armies, he's our God. He's the one in whose name we worship. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All God's people say, Amen. Yes. When we confess our sins, we remember who we are. When we hear God's word of forgiveness, we remember who he is. Uh, today, I, w- I would hold up for you a, a confession of all those times when, um, when we live as if we're blind. We live as if uh, we don't know where we came from and whose we are and where we're going. Uh, all those times when we live as if we're blind and we live enslaved to the stuff here as if we're going to be able to take it with us, you know. All those times when we make uh, the stuff uh, the purpose of our lives, uh, where we close our eyes to truth and we close our eyes to a Savior that restores us to God uh, and we, we, we bump into things and, and we, we lose our way um, and, and our lives reflect not the love of Jesus but um, this lostness in which we find ourselves. And, and in response to that, we see Jesus coming to save those who are lost and blind. Right now, his spirit touches your heart and says, I've come for you to open your eyes so that you can see. You can know who you are, a forgiven, loved child of God. You can know the purpose of loving others in my name and sharing this life with them. You can know your destiny. The gates of heaven are thrown open for you. You don't have to take anything with you because you got everything already. This I declare to you, your sins are forgiven, even those sins of living blind. And in place of that blindness, God would open our eyes so that we can live in his love. This I declare to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Let's read the gospel together today. It's from Luke, and it's not very long, so let's read it together. Go ahead, Mary, put it up there. Here we go. One, two, three. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Continue our series, Help Need a Cross Transfusion. Today uh, is Help I Need to See. Help I Need to See. Okay, dear, dear Christian friends. Um, there was a song written about this text. It's a kind of an older song. It goes something like this. Blind man sits by the road and he cried. Blind man sits by the road and he cried. Blind man sits by the road and he cried. He cried, whoa, oh, oh. Show me the way, show me the truth, show me the life. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, no, that, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Uh, you know what? Have you guys ever watched American Idol? All right. I just did an American Idol on you, right? Right? I was out of key. I wasn't singing the right notes, didn't sing the right words, right? I kind of put all the words. Have you ever watched that? uh, In fact, the first American Idol I saw was um, my my kids. I got home. They, Daddy, you got to watch this. You got to watch this. It's going to be so funny. And it was that American Idol one where they show all the people that think they can sing, but they can't. How, How many of you have seen that one? You can be honest here. I won't tell anybody. Yeah. And, and I remember I watched it for like five minutes, and I thought, oh, this is bad. I mean, it's so funny, but, but I, thought, I was so embarrassed for those folks, right? And, and, and I really couldn't watch it very long because they were really being made fun of on national TV, right? But all of them thought they could sing. They were blind to the fact they couldn't sing. Just like myself, I probably should, you, you, when I was singing, you probably thought, hey, save it for the shower, pal, right? <laughs> save, save it for the shower, uh, 
uh, we're blind to so much stuff in our lives. Uh, uh, and, and everywhere you look, you see that. I remember I, I worked with a guy in the grocery store when I was in college. His name was, his, it wasn't his real name. We'll call him Johnny, okay? I don't like to use real names. So, so uh, we'll call him Johnny. And, and, and this guy uh, started gambling in Las Vegas. And, and I heard, what I heard from him over and over again was how much money he was winning, right? And, and, and he was saying to me, he was saying to me, Brad, Brad, you got to come with me. We win lots of money. And I said, no, you know, I, I've got other things. That's not my deal. You know, I put him down easy, but I want to go to Vegas. And, and uh, finally, I asked one of the guys that he went with a lot. I said to him, hey, uh, is, is, is Johnny winning all this money? He says, well, yeah, that's what he's seeing. He's winning, all, what he do, he's winning all the money. What he doesn't see is all the money he's losing. And it's a lot more than what he's winning. Have you ever talked to a gambler like that? Yeah. All they see is what they're winning, not, not what they're losing. That's a form of being blind, isn't it? A gambler or anybody who's an addict in something, right? They only see one thing. They, they only see what they're winning. They don't see how they're losing. Or here's another one. One who does not yet know that beauty is more than skin deep. I remember I was a junior in high school, and I took this really pretty girl to a dance, and I really learned this lesson, right? That beauty is more than skin deep. It was a terrible evening, absolutely terrible evening. And I thought, woohoo! I get to take this pretty girl to a dance. Oh, man, was I wrong, right? But we're blind to that. In fact, I think our whole society is kind of blind to this one, right? Our whole society somehow thinks that, that beauty is skin deep, right? It's more than that, huh? It goes a lot deeper than skin. How about this one? One who has not learned that life is about relationships. I remember when I was a young father, my kids were real small, I was in Denver, and one of the older guys uh, in, in the church, he saw me uh, um, just put in a lot of hours with what I was doing. And, and, uh, and he pulled me aside. I remember one Sunday after services, he pulled me aside and he says, look, he says, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, but, but you know, I'm retired. And it's funny, I, I talk to a lot of retired guys, and not one of these guys say to me, boy, I wish I would have spent more hours working. They all say, I wish I would have spent more hours with my kids. Huh? One who's not learned that life is about uh, relationships. What's that old saying? Uh, um, Work is something you do to, to, to earn a living. Um, and and what, what you do, oh, I, I forgot that old saying. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wrote it down, I think. Uh, you make a living by what you earn. You make a life by what you give. Did you guys know that? What, could I have asked you that one? Yeah. You make a life by what you give. Life is about relationships. Huh? But lots of times we're blind with that stuff. We make life about other stuff. And, and, and we deny to ourselves that we're blind and that we're living in blindness. Don't, don't we? I'm really glad that that uh, older guy pulled me aside that day. It changed the way I live my life. It changed my life with, with my kids. It really did. Here, here's another one. Uh, uh, one, uh, a Christian even perhaps, who only sees the brokenness. They, they, they only see that life is broken. They don't see the blessings that God pours down on us or the good stuff. There, there was a cartoon when I was growing up, and the cartoon character, uh, one cartoon character had only one line, and the line was this, Oh me, oh my. Oh me, oh my. That was the only line. Oh me, oh my. It was um, uh, Lippy the Lion and Hardy Har Har. Anybody know that one? Thank you, thank you. Lippy the Lion and Har And that, that was the only line that guy said, right? Oh me, oh my. Yeah, uh, it, the, the, even the Christian who sees only the brokenness. Only the negative. Oh me, oh my. All of life is just oh me, oh my. And we're blind to the good stuff. <laughs> you ever been there? Is your world just colored dark? <laughs> I think I have one more. Yeah, one who is so blind, they do not even see their blindness. Like, <laughs> like me opening with that song, huh? <laughs> so blind, you don't even see the blindness. So here's the question. Where are you blind? Where do you need to see or see again? 
Now, the Bible um, lays out for us what we already know. What we already know by by nature, we, we know that, that 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 there's not a whole lot that we see for sure. Uh, we, we we know that of ourselves, we don't know where we came from. We don't know how things exist. It's a huge mystery to us how we even exist, right? We don't know our purpose in life, and, and we, we, we struggle to find that purpose. All we know is that, that, is that sometimes we erect these great sandcastles and say, that's my purpose, and then when the waves come and blow the sandcastle apart, we say, oh, I guess that's not my purpose. And we live as if we don't know where we're going. Last week, I, um, I read how we spent millions of dollars, billions of dollars, to send a, a, a rocket ship to Mars so they can tell us that billions of years ago there was water there. Were they there? That always gets me. We're talking B, you know, billions. Anyway, that water was there, and, and, and there's a type of clay there that maybe perhaps kind of might have been able to maybe support. What they, it wouldn't destroy the chemicals that's needed for life. We are driven to find our origins. We build the huge machine in Switzerland and bang a billion atoms together trying to figure out how everything began. We're driven to see, and the more we work at it, the less we see. Huh? The Bible says to us, you know what? You're right. You, you're, you're blind. You can't see. And the whole message of God to us is to open our eyes so that we can see. <laughs> to open our eyes to the reality that our origin is that God created us and he breathed into Adam and to each of us this breath of life and we have an eternal soul. And that we were made to live with God in relationship. That's why we know we exist. And like all the other animals, we know we exist. That's a mystery in itself. We, we can't figure that out with our eyesight. We, we gotta have God for that one. The Bible says we were created for relationship with God and with relationship with one another. That's who we are, created in the image of God. And our purpose is to live in that relationship to His glory and in love with one another. And Jesus came to restore that. <laughs> we, we, we lost that relationship. We were blind. And God, in, and God in Jesus Christ stepped into our world so that we could see again, so that we could have life the way it was meant to be. The forgiveness of our sins through this relationship bringing us again close to God in relationship. And our destiny is heaven itself, so that, so that nothing need enslave us here. All this stuff that we really know we can't take with us. Let me say it again. All this stuff that we really know we can't take with us. It doesn't matter because we've got everything already in heaven, right? It's the message, the Bible to us from Genesis to Revelation. Today, this text is God's gift to us to, to open our eyes so that we can see these things just maybe a little clearer, especially in those places where, where each of us, like a... Like a spear is, we know we're blind and we're living blind. Right in that place in your life and mine. Okay? Okay, this text begins like this. Jesus is, uh, is walking by this blind man. Now, now, if you think that was by chance, think again. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. He knows the end from the beginning. He didn't do anything by chance. He was coming after this guy. Just like he's coming after you this morning. If you think this is by chance, you're, 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 you're very mistaken. Jesus knew you'd be here, and he knew we'd be talking about this stuff, okay? So Jesus is walking by this, this, this blind guy as he planned to do, right? And the blind guy's sitting by the road, and, and he's begging. He'd probably been there for years and years and years. He's begging, right? Uh, and, and he said, well, what's the commotion? The blind guy said, well, what's the commotion? What, what, what's happening here? And, and, and they said, well, well, Jesus is walking by. Now, I don't know how he knew, but, but he must have known about Jesus. Maybe he's sitting by the roadside day after day, and you know how blind folks, they can hear better, right? And, and he's probably hearing this conversation. People are kind of walking by and saying, do you hear about this Jesus dude, man? You hear what he's doing? He's healing people, and he, he, this is what he's saying. He's saying he's the Savior, and he's, he's saying that, that through faith in him, we, we can know God talking about this stuff, right? 
And so now Jesus comes walking by, and he says, whoa, this is the one. This is the one who can heal me. This is the one who can open my eyes. This is the one. And he cries out to him, Jesus, son of David. Now, that title, that title indicates that he believed that Jesus was the Savior. See, there's hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament given hundreds, even thousands of years before Jesus came. One of them was that he would come from the line of David, the family of David. That the Messiah would come from David's family. And so when this man is yelling out, Jesus, son of David, he's saying, I know you're the Savior. I trust you. I know you're the Savior. Help me. Have mercy on me. I love that word mercy. We, the, um, the title for this series is Help. You always cry out for help when you can't do it yourself, right? Have mercy on me because I can't do it myself. I can't open my own eyes. I can't see. You know, as I, I get a chance to think this stuff through, uh, you know, and, and, and it really seems to me that, that uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't see much of anything very well. There is so much mystery in our existence. There is so much mystery to our lives. Of ourselves, we don't know the end from the beginning. We don't know which way is up. We don't even know what matter is. You know, the, the, I, I love to say that. This is all empty space. How is it held together? We don't know. And so he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now the people are kind of embarrassed for him. They're shutting him up. Oh, shh, don't ask for mercy. That means you can't do it yourself. Just be quiet. You know, kind of like a little kid. Have you ever done that with a little child? When you say, here, I'll help you with that, and they say, no, I want to do it my, myself, right? To say have mercy on me says I can't do it myself. There's only one way I can see, and that's through you, Jesus. That's the only way I can see. We're kind of embarrassed about that, by the way. we kind of got to lay down our pride Paul, in, uh, in the text that Rick read, he said, I, I count everything as loss. I count everything as loss for the joy of knowing Christ Jesus, the power of his resurrection. I can't do it. I can't figure it out. I can't open my own eyes. I can't see what I need to see. I count everything I can do as lost, throw it out the window. Lord, have mercy on me. Show me Jesus. I want to be there with Jesus. So even though they're trying to hold this guy back, Jesus says, bring that guy over here. And, and, and they bring him over. They, they obey Jesus. And then Jesus asks him this question. What do you want me to do for you? Their story is told three times in the Bible. Every single time this question is included, Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? Why do you think he's asking this question? What do you want me to do? Isn't it obvious the guy's blind, man? What do you mean, what do you want me to do? But that's what he asks. What do you want me to do for you? In the, whenever I do a wedding, there's this thing called the question of consent. It's not the vows, right? It's not like for, for, for better, for worse. So that, that's the vows, okay? Those are the promises. But the question of consent is like, hey, uh, this is, do you really want to take this woman uh, to, to be your wife? Do you, you really want to take this guy to be your husband? You really want to do this, right? It's like, hey, no, no one's got a shotgun there that's making you do this. You really want to do this. You know what? This is going to rock your world. This is going to change your life absolutely, completely. That, that's what that's saying. Now, now, I, now, now please, uh, other than my personal faith in Jesus Christ, my marriage is the greatest gift that God has given me in this life. Okay? So, so this, uh, this, I'm, I'm not uh, d- dissing marriage at all, right? But I love that question. Because it's saying, your world's going to change, man. It's going to get rocked. You really want to do this? You're going to promise to be husband and wife for a lifetime. You really want to do this. That's kind of what Jesus is doing here. You really want me to open your eyes? It's going to rock your world. It's going to change how you live your life. It's going to change everything. What do you want me to do for you? The guy said, 
not going to see that. Yeah, I, I know it's going to rock my world. I know that I'm going to have to maybe work for a living. I can't beg anymore. I mean, I know it's going to absolutely change my life, but I really want to see. I'm so tired of being blind. I'm so tired of living blind. <laughs> I'm so tired of not knowing the end from the beginning. I, I really want to see. I, I want to see the truth. Open my eyes, Jesus. I, I just want to see. Are you there? You want to know who you are and where you came from and your purpose here? You want to know your destiny, where you're going? You want to live in that reality? It's going to rock your world. <laughs> it can change your life. It's the greatest gift that God can give us. And Jesus said, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Now this text was not given as um, instructions to how to have enough faith so that, that God's got to heal you no matter where you're sick or how you're sick. That, that's not why, why, what this text is about. This great faith, and if you don't have enough faith, in you, then obviously that's why you're not being healed. Uh, arguably the greatest Christian that ever lived, uh, uh, St. Paul, I, I think he's the greatest guy ever lived. He went through so much for the gospel, I think he's the greatest Christian that ever lived personally. But, but he, had, he had something wrong physically, and the Bible says that he prayed three times that God would heal him. And God said no all three times. Didn't he, know, didn't he have enough faith to be healed? Of course he did. This text is not instructions on how to make sure God's going to heal you, how to force his hand by having enough faith. That's not what this text is about. This text is about opening your eyes so you can see. In the book of Luke, Jesus heals ten lepers. Uh, leprosy uh, is, was a, kind of like our AIDS today. All right? It was a horrible, horrible disease. It was a death sentence. Uh, they, they were pushed, and I'm not saying we do this in our time with, with AIDS, but they, they, with leprosy, they, they, they pushed them out of society, okay, because it was such a communicable disease, and, and, and it was a horrible, horrible death. It seemed as if the fingers would fall off, the, the digits and the nose, actually anything that was cartilaginous, car, had cartilage, the, it would eat away at the cartilage, okay, and, and so they become deformed, and you have great pain. It was, it was horrible. It was terrible, terrible way to die. There were 10 lepers that Jesus came upon. And he healed them all and told them to show themselves to the priest. Uh, that's, they, they were checked out to make sure they were healed. And the priest said, yo, you're healed. You're good. And one of them came back to Jesus, threw himself down on the ground, called him the, 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 the Savior, and, and, and thanked him. And Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. Now, the other nine were healed too. But they weren't well. Only the one who by faith received Jesus. He was the one who was well. This man could see, was made whole because by faith he received Jesus. And he walked with him. Immediately he received his sight. And what did he do? He followed Jesus. That's what it means to see. <laughs> it means to follow Jesus and to let his word guide our lives. To follow Jesus and let his word Touch our hearts with the reality of, of who we are. We're created in God's image. We're created to have relationship with him. And when we're cut off from him, we're never going to be full. It's never going to be right. We're always going to be blind. <laughs> we're created to know that we have purpose here and now to, to share his love and his truth with others and, and that our destiny is in heaven so that we're free now. We're free from the slavery of all the stuff. Follow Jesus means to, to, to know his word. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. 
Love your neighbors yourself. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. To follow Jesus is to live like he did. <laughs> That's always a litmus test. Look, what he, look where he went, look what he did, look how he lived. A couple of weeks ago, in, a, we, um, in a, a family devotion that Jane and I were going through, we, the, the text was the signs uh, for uh, the second coming of Christ. Uh, you know, there'll be earthquakes and, and there'll be wars and rumors of wars. False Christs will, will arise. Don't, don't follow them. And, and, and then it says, in the gospel will be preached to the whole world and then the end will come. And in this little devotional, the, the, from that reading, the, the one verse the guy said he was going to focus on was the gospel will be preached to the whole world and then the end will come. All right? And, and the, the reason I'm telling this story is that, is that we, we can... We can talk about stuff, but we have to be very careful because oftentimes film comes over our eyes. Even our eyes, well-meaning Christians, we have to again and again look at Jesus and follow him. So this, this guy wrote the devotion, and, and he came to this conclusion. All right, this is what you do. You be on your guard. Uh, you, you confess your sins. Uh, uh, you, you, um, you, you pray. Uh, you pray, and you pray especially that the end would come, that Jesus would come. All those things are good. There's nothing wrong with that. But as I read this thing, I thought, now, wait a minute. The verse that he wanted to focus on, the gospel will be preached to the whole world, and then the end will come. Don't you think we ought to be a part of that? Especially, especially when the one commandment, the one mission that God gave all of his people was to, as you go, share the good news of Jesus Christ in your family, across the street, in your town, in your city, in your community, in your state, in your world. Yeah, that's the one, one mission we have. Don't you think instead of circling the wagons, right, and, and, and being on your guard and, and, and praying and, and be, being careful and, and, and praying for that, don't you think we're supposed, to, we're, we're supposed to blow up the wagon train and get out of there just like Jesus did? Isn't that what he did? He went into the hurting people. He went to the sick. He went to the lost. He went out. We've got to open our eyes. We've got to be careful not to let film come over our eyes in everything. <laughs> and Jesus has come to open our eyes so we can know who we are. We can know our purpose. We can know what we're here for. We can know what it means to, to love in his name and, and, and to share his truth with all. And we can know where we're going so that nothing can enslave us here. So, this week, pray that God the Holy Spirit would lead you to see where you are blind. That's a pretty good prayer. Powering you to cry out to see and seeing, may your eyes be open to follow Jesus and following May you serve others that they might see. Amen. Now may the peace of God which pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen. We stand and confess our Christian faith. Christians have used these words for close to uh, 1,700 years uh, uh, to confess their faith. We join our voices with theirs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen.